It's time for the second semifinal of the Glory 13 Tokyo Welterweight Tournament. The number two ranked Bazooka Joe, Joseph Valtellini, against the number 13 ranked Raymond, the real deal, Daniels. And again, the stats are real similar here, but the one stat that we don't see is the experience of the kickboxing of Joseph Valtellini and as well, the karate experience of Raymond Daniels. Tale of the tape brought to you by the makers of Five Hour Energy. Our second semi-final in our welterweight tournament scheduled for three three-minute rounds. And introducing first, fighting out of the black corner, this karate black belt puts a perfect 24-0 record on the line tonight in Tokyo. He stands six feet two inches tall, 1.88 meters, and he weighed in at 169 pounds, 76.7 kilos. Fighting tonight out of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, here is Raymond Reed. Here now is his opponent fighting out of the white corner, an IKF World Light Middleweight Champion. His professional record, 10 wins with just one loss, nine of those 10 wins by knockout. At five feet, 11 inches tall, 1.80 meters. He weighed in at an even 169 pounds, 76.9 kilos, fighting tonight out of Canada. And rank number two in the Glory World Rankings, please welcome Bazooka Joe. Valtellini! Your referee for this contest, Atsushi Onari. Atsushi Onari, the referee for this, our second semi-final matchup. The bell and round one. Bazooka Joe, Joseph Valtellini in the white gloves. Raymond, the real deal, Daniels, taking a sweet time of engaging in activity in the black gloves. Coming off a victory in his glory debut at Glory 11 Chicago with a first round TKO over Brian Foster. Valtellini has won all three of his appearances in the glory ring. Fresh off a win over Kareem Gaji via third round TKO at Glory 11 Chicago back in October. Daniels, just five years old when his black belt father, Frank, began teaching him the art of Kempo Karate. And that was the beginning of a long, hard road that saw the younger Daniels earn his own black belt 17 years later. American fans may recognize Daniel for his run in Chuck Norris's World Combat League. Whips in the outside low kick, the head kick blocked by Valtellini who is an aggressive knockout artist. But outside the ring, works as a PE teacher in a school for youths with special needs in his native Toronto. Daniels has a unique style. It comes from point karate. In point karate, it's all about scoring and not getting hit. What Daniels is doing, that's called blitzing in point karate tournaments. He'll slide in, score quick, and move and not get hit. And it's very hard for people to deal with if they're not used to fighting someone like that. Valtellini aptly called the 2013 the year of the underdog as we saw the oblique kick there from Daniels. And uh, boy, you're right. You look at the tournament winners in glory. We have Andy Risty, Joe Schilling, Rico Verhoeven. All three of them went into their respective tournaments as underdogs all emerged victorious. Double left hook by Valtellini finishes off that combination with a left outside low kick as they clinch now. And again, they have up to five seconds to deliver effective knee strikes in the clinch. Under a minute left in the opening round. Valtellini needs to get busier. He's waiting for something to happen. With a guy who's that mobile, you got to throw more. You need output to make things land. Got to be on the lookout for Daniel's trademark jumping spin kick. Body kick by Valtellini. Again, attacking the lead leg is Daniels. There's a right hand through the guard by Valtellini. Valtellini needs to cut that ring off. Oh, and that right hand sent Valtellini sprawling, but it was not ruled a knockdown by the referee. He needs to cut the ring off on a guy like Raymond Daniels. He can't chase him. He's got there. That's what happened. He let him go there. He's got to cut the ring off, move his feet so he can't get away. Stop the 
Strong opening three minutes for Raymond Real Deal Daniels, who was the last to gain entry into the tournament, replacing Mark Devont. That's definitely Daniels' round by effective striking, hitting and moving, ring generalship. He's, you know, floating like a butterfly, sting like a bee, as they say back in the day with Muhammad Ali. You know, he's doing a great job. He's getting more comfortable with the low kicks and he's learning the glory style of fighting. It's okay. Okay. Again, it's very hard to hit something that isn't there. And Daniels is very good at not being there for his opponents. While still in high school, Daniels became a father and seeking a better life for him and his son. At 21, he became a peace officer with the Long Beach, California Police Department, serving the department before retiring to concentrate on his martial arts teaching and professional kickboxing careers. And there is Alyssa, who you can follow on Twitter. You can see her in. This month's F FHM magazine. I saw a little birdie told me. Second round begins as the two touch gloves. Raymond the Real Deal Daniels in the black gloves. Bazooka Joe, Joseph Valtellini on a much aggressive start with the white gloves. He connects with the inside low kick. And again, that side kick by Daniels comes at you at all kinds of angles. He's like a... We're in service of kicks. But Valtellini remaining focused, high guard. What Joseph needs to do is not back up. If he doesn't back up, he doesn't give Daniels room to do that. If he holds his ground, he's got to back Daniels up and he'll control this fight. The 33-year-old Daniels with more than double the professional experience of the 28-year-old Valtellini who comes in again with 11 pro fights, 10 wins, 9 inside the distance, lead left hook to the liver by Valtellini. This fight almost reminds me of uh, Sugar, uh, rather, uh, Oscar De La Hoya when he fought Pernell Whitaker. He had a hard time dealing with uh, Sweet Pea's footwork. Looking at total strikes landed, the edges with a Valtellini. Double those landed according to strike stats, but the numbers don't always tell the full story of the fight. What has been a competitive affair thus far, lead a kick to the outside of the left leg of Daniels there's a jumping knee by Daniels another knee to the midsection counter with a outside low kick by Valtellini who has Daniels in the corner just past the midway point of round two starting to gun him down with those low kicks you can see that Daniels is not moving as good you can see he's moving a little gingerly there again he's not that's it a triumvirate of outside low kicks executed by Valtellini. <laughs> Better round for the Canadian. Taking it to Daniels in the corner. Unleashing punches in bunches. Daniels comes back with a counter right that connects to the side of Valtellini's face. Under a minute left in the second round. The disadvantage of Daniels' blitzing style when he lands like that off balance, it's very easy for a good low kicker to kick him. It's hard to check when you're off balance. A much different atmosphere in Japan than you may be accustomed to if you've seen our previous glory events. The Japanese audience, very respectful, very educated, very focused on the action inside the squared circle. Daniels backing away, Valtellini wanting to cut off the ring. Outside, low kick by Valtellini. Final 10 seconds in what has been a much better round for 28-year-old Bazooka Joe, Joseph Valtellini. We're headed to the third and final round. Well, the ammunition is stocked in the bazooka. Round two was all Valtellini. All day with the low kicks, and I think he could stop Daniels in the third round if he stays on him. He's doing a great job. Again, here's two looks at that big round kick that hurt Daniels. Setting it up perfect, leading with the punches first, putting the punches in the face to camouflage a good low kick. He cut under the block. That stumbled him, came back with a nice combination. Again, went to the body, textbook, again, right around and under that block and stumbled him. You can see that the low kicks are definitely affecting the athletic and, 
and, and agile Daniels. It's slowing him down. That's that's why you want to low kick people. It's like taking the wheels off of a good car. Conspicuous by his absence in his corner is his coach, Paul Minhas, who coached Gary Goodridge in the Pride and K1 days, known for teaching those low kicks. There's a look at Clark, another one of our four lovely Glory girls in attendance here. Ariake Coliseum, Tokyo, Japan, for Glory 13. The bell and the third and final round begins a spot in the final against the number one ranked Nikki the natural Holtzkin hangs in the balance it looks like uh, Daniel's uh, bells were jingled there by Valtellini not the Christmas celebration he was looking for Valtellini on the attack Right hand, outside low kick, good combination there by the Canadian. What we saw in Chicago at Glory is Valtellini gets stronger as the fight comes, and, and he's doing a good job. He kicks it up in all of his Glory fights. And again, the totals, I mean, look at it. He's landed almost half of his shots, 47%, and they're all power shots, too. Valtellini very proud of his Italian heritage. In fact, it was his father, Emilio. As a young boy, they used to watch movies like Kickboxer, Bloodsport, and Rocky together, and Emilio really gave his son every opportunity to succeed in the martial arts, and he's made the trip to Japan as he watches his son deliver a couple of left hooks to the body. Daniels goes down following that kick, and referee waves off the fight. It'll be the number two ranked Valtellini against the number one ranked Holtzkin in what should be a sensational final later tonight. Wow, what a finish. He started out slow, but again, came back. That's why we call him the bazooka. He's got firepower. This kid is Kid Dynamite. So Bazooka Joe, Joseph Valtellini records his 10th victory inside the distance, improving to 11 and 1. You're watching Glory 13 Tokyo. What a performance, Moro. Again, it's solid kickboxing fundamentals that win fights. Low kicks, straight punches, good solid hooks. Valtellini is a very well-schooled fighter, and he used his good game plan tonight to get the big victory, and now he's in the championship round. And a very supportive family. His parents looked at combat sports as a way of teaching discipline rather than something used to promote violence in a negative manner. He used to punch bags as toys when he was a youngster. Took up Taekwondo at an early age. Stuck with it until age 19 when he decided he wanted something harder. And then started training in Muay Thai before uh, hooking up with crew Paul Minhas, who we mentioned could not make the trip to Japan due to family business back in Canada, but I know he's smiling ear to ear after what he just saw here in Tokyo. The Ariake Coliseum in Tokyo, site of Glory 13. Let's go to Tim Hughes with the official decision in our, our announcement in our second semifinal matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, our winner moves one step closer to being crowned tournament world champion with an official time of one minute, 20 seconds of that third and final round. This one ruled a knockout for your winner, Joseph Vatellini. Bazooka Joe bringing the heavy artillery to Japan, vanquishing Raymond the real deal Daniels in impressive fashion. Great performance again. He, he was on him like white on rice at the end of that fight. Used those low kicks, and again, he started cutting that ring off, and he made the, the technical changes that won the fight. That's what it's about in these tournaments. You've got to be able to change, adapt, and 